I will exalt you, my God, the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. And so this morning, with these words from Psalm 145, I want to bid you welcome. Welcome to St. Peter's Church online from wherever you are as we worship together whether at the same time live or whether at a different time. Our service theme today will focus on love, the love that God gives us for one another. And so as we start, let's start with a word of prayer. Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that you have made and that we can rejoice in it and be glad Thank you for the opportunity to be able to fellowship together even over the internet, maybe in our own places, different circumstances, but may the eyes of our hearts be lifted to you, the King of Kings. May our joy reach out to you and our praise rise up before you as incense. And as we pray before you and join all the saints, Lord, in worshipping you today, we pray that you would reach out and minister to us, speak to our hearts, in Jesus' name. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We're going to sing our first hymn, Come Down, O Love Divine. Oh, 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 
You know, God wants us to live in the fullness of his love and to live with the fullness of his love in us. But we tend to empty ourselves of that love so many times with the things we think or say or do. But God calls us back to him. So let's let's turn to him and ask him for his forgiveness and ask him to restore us once again into the fullness of that love. If you would say with me, Father, we have sinned against heaven and against you. We are not worthy to be called your children. We turn to you again. Have mercy on us. Bring us back to yourself as those who once were dead, but now have life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You know, when our sins are forgiven, we feel happy. We rejoice. We feel light. We feel like we want to dance with gladness and joy. And so let everything be said and done in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God through Jesus Christ. Sing psalms, hymns, and sacred songs. Let us sing to God with thankful hearts. Open our lips, Lord, and we shall proclaim your praise. And so we sing together our, our well-known chorus, that calls out for us to be bound together with the cords of love. Bind us together, Lord. Bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord. Bind us together. Lord, bind us. 
reading is taken from 1 John chapter 4 verses 7 to 12 under the heading God's love and ours. Dear friends let's love one another for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another no one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is made complete in us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Yeah. 
second reading is taken from Luke chapter 14 verses 25 to 35. The cost of being a disciple. Large crowds were tra traveling with Jesus and turning to them he said, if anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and his mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes even their own life, such a person cannot be my disciple. And whoever does not carry their cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. Suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Won't you first sit down and estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to complete it? For if you lay the foundation and are not able to finish it, 
everyone who sees it will ridicule you saying, this person began to build and wasn't able to finish. Or suppose a king is about to go to war against another king. Won't he first sit down and consider whether he's able, with 10,000 men, to oppose the one coming against him with 20,000? If he's not able, will he send a delegation while the others are still a long way off and will ask for terms of peace? In the same way, those of you who do not give up everything you have cannot be my disciples. Salt is good, but if it loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It's fit neither for the soil nor for the manure pile. It's thrown out. Whoever has ears to hear, let him hear. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Heavenly Father, would you lead us by your word into places where we experience the greatness of your love for us. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. We are in our series of looking at what it means to be church. And we've looked at various aspects of it. And today our theme is commitment and community. One of the hardest things for a Muslim making a public declaration of their faith is that they have to totally leave their community. They are shunned from their community. And they might come to faith in Jesus as the Messiah, as the Lord, as the Savior. But within their hearts, they find it difficult to make that public declaration. Because the moment they make that public declaration, it's not just saying, I'm changing from becoming a Muslim to becoming a Christian. But it's a rejection and a denial of their community and their family, they lose even their contacts with their families. They are shunned and thrown out. And it's a very difficult thing for Muslims when they take that step, making that public de declaration. Because they're literally tearing away the fabric of their life that has been there up to that moment. And I think one of the things that we have lost outside of the Muslim world has been the sense of community, this deep sense of community. And if I dare say that actually we see that in the sense of people don't think being part of the church is important. They live their lives out there, but actually church is a Sunday uh, event that takes place in their lives, it's much like the football on Saturday or the golf on Wednesday, or the coffee morning on a Monday. They, they, for them, that is a social part of their lives, but it's not community in the sense that God looks at the church and wants to see that kind of community life in church. The original church in Acts chapter 4, the first church, the early church, we find that sense of community. They loved one another, they cared for one another. And you know, when we read the thing about uh, they brought all their things, they had all things in common, they sold what they had, they brought it, gave the money, that money was then used to feed the poor. It was those that were within the, the church who had need were being met by the needs of the church. That's where the battle started between the Greeks and the Jews over the feeding and the caring of the widows within the family of the church. You see, there is that caring love that God is looking for in his church, that he's calling the church to have. Jesus said to his disciples, love one another. A new commandment I give you, love one another as I have loved you. So we are called to love one another as Jesus has loved us. Now, what does that mean? What does that mean for us in real terms of loving one another within the body of Christ? Just sit here and think of somebody that you have worshipped alongside at some point in this last year. 
or even let's let's go back beyond that in the last five years and then ask yourself this question how much do I know about them how much do I know about the challenges that they're facing the ups and downs that they're going through you see as the body of Christ we are called to care for one another we are called to love one another and in love we would want to know about one another not from a sense of wanting to gossip for each other, but from a sense of wanting to know and be part because we are the family of God. Now, families are dysfunctional. But God wants us to express his perfect love towards one another. And Jesus said, as I have loved you. Now, what does that mean when he calls us to love like that? John tells us in his epistle, he says, beloved, love one another. For love is of God. And whoever lives in love lives in God. So if we are to join together in God and live in God together as the body of Christ, as the family of Christ here in this place, we must have that love of God shed abroad in our hearts. Now what does the Bible tell us about that? The first thing we know about the love that Jesus has for us when he says, I loved you, is that it's a sacrificial love. He gave up for his disciples, for those who follow him. He gave up for those lost in sin to bring them to salvation. He sacrificed his position up in heaven in eternity with God. You know, that's been changed because Jesus came down. So now there is the human flesh as part of the Godhead. He came down among us. He gave up. Paul tells us, he humbled himself. He did not think it was right to be, it was robbery to hold on to the things that were divine, even though he was divine. Yet he gave up his divine nature to become human and dwell among us. And then he sacrificed even further by dying on the cross of Calvary. And there on the stained glass window behind me, you can see that picture of that sacrificial love of Jesus poured out upon you and upon me. So he calls us to sacrifice ourselves for one another. And that makes a good sound bite. But in reality, it means laying down our lives for one another. Not just taking our coat and laying it across a puddle so that someone could walk across it as they did in the days of chivalry. But to become that bridge and lay down ourselves so that they can cross over to eternal life. Because Jesus said, by this shall all people know that you are my disciples if you have love one for another. This love that you have for one another is the, the witness and the testimony to the world of God's love for us. It is this, this witness. It is this love that we have for one another. It's this community that actually will draw people to Jesus Christ. And that will bring the lost to salvation. It's not all our wonderful programs. It's not the strategies we have. It's not the wonderful uh, way that we present ourselves. But it is when we live together as the body of Christ. And make no mistake, community is not expressed in the activity of the church. But community is expressed in how we live for one another. So I don't live my life for myself. I live my life for my brothers and sisters. And let me tell you, this has been a hard message to prepare because God has challenged me every step of the way on everything that I'm saying to you today. There have been tears. There has been falling on knees, seeking God's forgiveness, asking for strength for the way forward. It's love. That is sacrificial. And you know, that sacrificial love then leads to unity in the body of Christ. We live in a world today where it's individual. 
You go that way, I'll go that way. God's not calling for uniformity. God is not calling for perfection in the body of Christ. But he's calling for unity. Unity where we stand by one another. Where we pray for one another. Where we care for one another. Where we, where we are willing to give up one another. And yes, like any family, our church, a, a church is dysfunctional. But what marks it out is that even within that, there needs to be that unity and love. And where there is disunity, the church cannot reach the lost for Christ. You see, Jesus said, wherever two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst. And it is his presence in the midst of his people that draws the sinners and the lost to his salvation. Are we doing all that makes for that common bond of fellowship and community? Are we doing all that builds up our common life together? How common is, is the life of the church? Is it only common on the Sunday when we sing the same words and we say the same words and we listen to the same words? Or is it common throughout the week in every way? That's the love God is calling us to show. God loves us and it is God's love that brings that unity into our midst. The psalmist says, how blessed, how good it is when brothers dwell together in unity, for it is there that God commands the blessing. If there is no unity in the church, there is no blessing. And we can do all the right things, we can have all the right things, we can, you know, plan the best things. But if there is no unity in the church, there is no blessing. And where there is no blessing, we find that people are not drawn to Christ. They're not drawn to salvation. Because they look at the church and they say, what's different? What's different between the church and and my life outside of the church. What is the church offering me? They're offering me a social group. Well, I've got a social group outside. They've got such and such an activity. And every activity that we as a church are thinking of doing, they have in a different form outside to which they are attracted. And we try to change our program to try and match what's out in the world to draw people to Christ. Actually, what Christ is calling us to do is not that. Forget that bottom line. The bottom line in Christ's view is the love of God shed abroad in our hearts that draws us into that community. And it is that community that draws people, it is a love of God, that perfect love of God in our lives, that then draws people, when they look at us and say, right, I go for lunch with my friends, but there's a lunch club here that meets because there is a love of Christ over here. And that is something different. I go out to a, to a concert there, and it's wonderful, but actually when I come to church and hear the singing and it, it lifts me up because I can sense the love of God in it. The love of God shed abroad in our hearts. You see, God wants us to be that church in which his love flows freely between members, not just on the Sunday, but in the weekday too. Not just because somebody can do something do we love them, but loving them unconditionally as Jesus has loved you and he has loved me. Loving them as his children. It's difficult. That kind of unity. 
that comes from laying down yourself. Laying down what you think best for yourself. That kind of unity can only be produced by the Spirit of God. It is that unity that works to draw a lost world to God. And you know, I think the reason we don't see that growth, we don't see people coming to know Jesus, is because we're trying to bring them to know the church. And the church does not display that love and does not display that unity. And when I'm saying the church, I'm speaking generically about the church, not a specific church, please. It's sad when the church does not live in the love of God. When we live in the love of God, we do things in the power of the Spirit. We do things with compassion. We care for one another. We lift one another up. We strengthen one another. We meet one another's needs. And we are allow our needs. We make ourselves vulnerable, allowing our, our own needs to be met by somebody else. Not living in pride and saying, no, 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 I can't accept that. But being willing to say, I'm struggling in this. I'm struggling with this attitude. I'm struggling with the sin in my life. I'm struggling with this need in my life. Whether it be clothes or food or money. But being willing to make ourselves vulnerable so that we can receive the gift of Christ in our brother, in our sister. You know, Paul, when he speaks in to the church in Corinth, and he speaks about putting a couple of people out of the fellowship because they would not follow, they would, would not be part of the fellowship and the family of God. He said, I've put them out, I've given them over to the devil. What he basically means is he has taken them and he's put them into the world. He's shunned them from the fellowships. So they've gone into the world which is ruled by the devil. Hoping that by that experience they will know what they're missing and come back into fellowship in repentance and seeking God's forgiveness. Today we don't do that. And I'm not advocating we do that. There is a place, but... That's not what I'm advocating. But you know, a lot of people do that to themselves. They put themselves out into the world away from the church. And putting themselves into harm's way, into danger. We need to be part of the body of Christ to know the protection, the presence of God, the love of God. No man is an island. No one can be a Christian on their own. We need to be part of that community. It means making ourselves vulnerable. It means taking a risk at being rejected. It means taking a risk at not having my voice heard. But it means if I'm part of that community, I am part of portraying Jesus to a lost world. And make no mistake, the mission of the church is not to just do good. But the central and only mission of the church that we are called to do is to proclaim Jesus as Lord. And that message only gains power when the community is strong. When the love of God, the sacrificial love of Jesus is seen in our midst. I have spoken in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. All oh, the room was hushed and still and when the bowl was filled he stooped to wash their feet and when it was complete he said this
is what I'm asking you to do This is why I'm kneeling here beside you This is what I want my church to be This is what I want the world to see Who it is you follow Love each other One another Love each other In the way that I have loved you Walk together And whatever comes Love each other In the way that I have loved you Let the room be hushed and still Let us go to where he kneels And join him as he serves And learn his ways of love He said, this is what I'm asking you to do this is why I'm kneeling here beside you This is what I want my church to be This is what I want the world to see Who it is you follow Love each other One another Love each other in the way that I have loved you Walk together And whatever comes Love each other In the way that I have loved you We're reminded from Jeremiah 29, and this is the message translation. I know what I'm doing. I have it all planned out. Plans to take care of you, not abandon you. Plans to give you the future you hope for. Lord, thank you that we are invited to come to you in prayer, to tell you our thoughts our hopes and dreams, our worries and concerns. Thank you that you promise to listen. Help us listen better to you, to learn better to hear you when you speak. Father, we bring our broken world to you, full of conflict and tension. We pray for those whose homes and livelihoods are destroyed by natural disasters and by conflict, especially for those who have to flee as refugees. We ask that refugees will find a new home that is safe and secure. We ask for your provision for all those who have lost homes and livelihoods and for your blessing on organisations such as Tear Fund and Christian Aid who work to support the most vulnerable in the world. Help us to see where we can help. We bring our town of Redditch to you, for those who are vulnerable, for those who are homeless, those already living in poverty, those about to be impacted by the reduction in universal credit. We pray and we thank you for the work of Food Bank and Acts of Kindness as they strive to support people in need locally. We pray for St Peter's, asking as we continue to reflect on this series, Letters to the Church, you will help us to see your vision and plan for St Peter's. We pray for those who are ill, 
or struggling in any way, asking for your healing hand and blessing on them. We pray for those who are bereaved, that you will comfort them in their grief. Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our collect for today, which we pray at the end of this time of prayer. Almighty God, forasmuch as without you we are not able to please you, mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts and shed abroad in our hearts your love. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. It's been good to have you with us this morning and to join together with you in worshipping the Lord and for me to be able to share with you some of the things that God is saying and for us to worship God in spirit and truth. I'd like to say thank you to Jeff Thomas for bringing us our Bible readings this morning and to Dr. Andrea Stevens for leading us in our prayers. And of course, a big thank you to the band uh, for the hard work that they've put in in making available to us music that we can use in our online services. This coming week, there are several birthdays in our church family, and I'd like to wish each one of them on behalf of our church family. And they are Linda Pritchard, Jenny Nathaniel, Felicity Melly. Dr. Helen Morell and David Spencer. May God bless you, not just on the day of your birthday, but in all the years that come, as you experience the goodness of the Lord in your, in your life. You can find all the notices for St. Peter's Church in the catch, and the link for that can be found in the description below. So do go and have a look at the catch and see all the notices of what's happening as things begin to start again. There are a couple of notices that I want to highlight, particularly this morning. And one of them is that on the 31st of October, we have our annual service of remembrance, thanksgiving and hope. When we remember those who have died in the past, our loved ones, but we give thanks to God for their witness, for their example, and for the hope of the resurrection that we as Christians enjoy and celebrate. That will be on the 31st of October at four o'clock in the afternoon. We would like to begin serving refreshments after service in, in a uh, COVID safe manner and uh, we are looking for volunteers to help us. So if you are willing and are happy to volunteer and available to volunteer, then do have a word with our church warden, Linda Nicholas, and you can contact her through the church office and uh, she will be happy to give you any information and uh, help you uh, be part of that ministry of fellowship and conversation. This coming week, morning prayers, as always, will be from Monday to Friday at 10 o'clock in the morning. And next Sunday, we gather together again for worship at 10.30 here online on our YouTube channel and in church. So hope to see you then and have you with us once again. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forever. Amen.
from heaven you came, help us pray. Enter our world, your glory bear, not to be served, but to serve. And give your life that we might live. This is our God, the servant king. He calls us now to follow him, to bring our lives as a daily Let us love.